Hi, I'm Mark Lediard, and this is another behind the scenes film for the short film Eclipse. Um, Eclipse is an entry into the My Road Reel 2015 competition, um, and as part of that, we were asked to make a, a short behind the scenes making of film, um, but that was only allowed to be three minutes long. And I wanted to show a bit more of the process behind how we did some of the shots, particularly the sky replacements and some of the VFX shots, and I couldn't fit it into the three minute making of, so I thought I'd take the time to show you that now. So, in this shot, this is one of our key shots for the film. Uh, our character Sarah is about to encounter the solar eclipse and when we shot it, it was a little late in the day, the sky had gone a bit flat uh, the light had gone quite flat and actually the light looked fine, the light on her looks great and it sort of suited what we wanted but we wanted to make the sky a bit more dramatic um, it's been interesting watching the behind the scenes documentaries for the recent Mad Max film Fury Road almost every shot in that has had the sky replaced so this is a really useful technique um, replacing skies can give you so much more drama in your shot and if you live in England like I do, um, especially the northeast of England it's cold and it can be cloudy and miserable 90% of the time so I do a lot of sky replacement so in this shot, obviously the camera uh, was on a dolly, on a rubber wheel dolly, and obviously there's a couple of problems here, one of which is the sky is a bit flat, and the other of which is that there's an enormous great light in shot. With the width of the lens and with the shot, we couldn't really put that light anywhere else, we knew it was going to be there, so we knew that was something we were going to have to fix in post. And so here's the shot in After Effects. You can see that we went for an anamorphic aspect ratio of around 239 to 1, and that gave us a composition size of... 2048 by 858 pixels. So the original shot, although it was shot 16.9, we made our composition that size in After Effects um, and rendered all our shots at that size. The first thing to do was track the shot and I did that just using the 2D tracker in After Effects. Uh, you can see that you just have to pick two points on the horizon, make sure that you have the switches select for position, scale and rotation, uh, and then let After Effects do its magic tracking the shot. And it did that very well. You then apply that tracking to a null object a null object is an object in the scene that you can't see, it doesn't do anything else other than really just be a place where information like tracking data can be stored and then other items, other things in the shot can be parented or made to match the movement of that null object. And it's a useful way of just basically keeping everything together. So once we have that null object tracked into the scene, uh, we found our sky. And this is a sky that I found uh, through a Google image search online. And it's always, when you search for stuff on Google, you can obviously search for items that are labeled for reuse, that aren't copyright controlled or are Creative Commons copyright free. And I found this wonderful shot. Uh, a lot of detail, nice scale to it. It's about three and a half thousand pixels wide. Perfect for what we needed. So once we've dropped that into After Effects with a, a little bit of a mask just to feather the bottom of it off and positioned it into the shot, I parented it to the null object and you can see that it locks perfectly into the shot. So the next thing to do is to put our actress, uh, Rachel Teat, who plays Sarah, back in over the top and also the horizon as well. And we did that just by putting another layer of the original video back over the top and using a luma key, just using the extract effect in After Effects with a very, very soft luminance key lots of feathering on it so you're keeping some of the original sky in there um, and it's blending over the top of the new sky that you're putting in there and once that's in we add another layer of the original footage again just with a mask on and that just helped us keep in all the foreground details and fill in any holes for anything that had uh, got dropped out for instance there's a small bright spot on the uh, bottom of the skateboard ramp and that was getting cut out by the luma key so putting that mask in with that layer just obviously helped fill that back in and also kept the highlight line where the trees meet the sky uh, it looked much better I think and again everything's feathered lots and lots of feathering and now obviously we need to get rid of the light as well the light stand is still in there the light itself has been covered now by the sky but the light stand's still there so we tracked another track point just a, a standard again 2D track in After Effects. And once we had that we went and found another plate of the same scene that didn't have the light stand in. I think this was from actually just a previous take from a different angle. And the light stand wasn't in the shot there so we managed to grab a piece of the horizon with the trees and the sky, just take it from that shot, cut out the bit that we wanted and an overlay it onto the top of our new composition here. Now we just needed our eclipse. Rather than wait 16 years for one to come round and be there at exactly the right time, I thought we'd make our own. So this is a very, very simple composition. It's just a solid with a circular mask and then another circular mask subtracting away from that. And then we put that into the image. Then of course we added a lens flare uh, using optical flares from Video Copilot. And the great thing about optical flares is that it lets you create custom flares, uh, in particular custom textures 
And so what I did was I created some custom flare objects from images that actually came from a real solar eclipse. And there was a solar eclipse that happened and was visible in the UK uh, in March this year. It was one of the inspirations behind making this film. Um, and so I went out with my GH4 camera and a very long lens and some gaffer tape and some ND filters. And that was because I didn't have the right adapter to put the ND filters on the front of the camera. So thank you, gaffer tape. And I shot some footage. And, and as you can see, that footage gave us very distinct lens flares. And you can see those little green half moons and orange half moons that actually came from the lens that I was using and from the actual solar eclipse. And so I took those as images, I put them into optical flares, and I made my own custom eclipse lens flare. That's tracked to a light, and the light is tracked to the null object again, and so it moves perfectly with the scene. Finally, we did some color correction, so added in uh, an orange solid with a mask, heavily feathered, and that just gave a little bit of warmth to the sky, a little bit more of a sunset feel. And then another mask on a black solid, which is set to overlay, and that's just creating a bit of shadow from the eclipse. And then another solid just filling in that little bit of hole in the background where we replaced the skyline, the trees, the, uh, the difference in light there just didn't seem to quite match for me. And because we shot on the Arri Amira, we shot in Log C, which is the very, very flat mode that the Arri cameras have. Um, and it gave us a very flat image, but I wanted to see what this image looked like in Rec. 709 color space, which was where we were going to end up. So I applied an adjustment layer. I went to Utility, Apply Color LUT, and I selected the Rec. 709 Amira LUT that I have. And I just put that on as an adjustment layer over the top so that I could see. And actually in the final rendering, what I did was I turned that adjustment layer into a guide layer so that it wouldn't render with the footage, uh, but it was just useful as a guide here in After Effects so that I could see how the final shot was gonna look. I added in some grain, not too much, just set to about 10% and overlaid over the top of the image. And that just helps blend in the elements that we've added, like the lens flare, uh, like the clouds, just give everything a subtle grain and it just helps it all sit together. And finally, I added in some stock footage of some custom lens flares. And these came from a company called Lens Distortions from their Legacy Pack. Uh, it's great stuff, I really recommend it if you can get hold of it. And that just gave us a lovely glow as the eclipse sort of first enters the top of the screen there and matched in with the other lens flares, I think gives the shot a really organic look. Obviously this wasn't the final shot. After this, we took it into DaVinci Resolve. We did a color grade. So the final shot here has got a slight color grade on it. And there's the final shot. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope that was useful. Um, sky replacements are something I've had to do a lot over the years. So I know they're a really useful skill to have, uh, a really useful thing to learn in After Effects. Uh, if you haven't, please take the time to watch Eclipse and vote for us if you like it on my road reel. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.